Hey guys, listen, I just want to dive straight into this video today. Over the last few days and really over the last year or so, I've received hundreds, if not close to a thousand messages of people asking me, how do I reach my family members who are in the LGBTQ community or how do I pray for them? You know, whether this is somebody who's actually living in an LGBTQ lifestyle, or maybe it's somebody who's being raised by two moms or two dads. You know, I want to share some of my experience because obviously I was born by artificial insemination. I grew up in a lesbian household. I had never been to church, never heard the gospel, never heard the name of Jesus. And I believe that what we're seeing right now in our nation and the nations of the earth, this is one of the greatest attacks on a generation. And so as Christians, as believers, Believers, yes, we have the Holy Spirit in us to lead us and guide us absolutely. But I want to make this video and give you some practical things to do and practical things not to do so that we can reach the LGBT community with the gospel. Because I believe, just like the Jesus People Movement and the hippies, could the LGBTQ community be the next community that the Spirit of God hits, saves thousands of them in a short time frame, and shifts the trajectory of America? So let's dive into this. So here's the first thing you don't want to do. Jesus said the greatest command is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, all your mind. And to what? Love your neighbor as yourself. Now, unfortunately, we've taken this word love and it's been twisted in a lot of Christian communities and a lot of churches where it's just all about love, 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 love. No, no, listen, here's what Jesus is saying. Love me with everything that you have and love people as you would love yourself. However, if you say you actually love somebody, but you don't share the truth with them, that is not true love because love and truth go hand in hand. But here's what you don't want to do. Imagine you're walking down the street and somebody who you don't know, or maybe even somebody you do know, walks up to you out of nowhere and just says, listen, you're a sinner going to hell. You're horrible. You're bad. You're this, you're that. Well, the first reaction would probably be, even if someone did this to me, someone who's a son of God and who knows my identity, I'd be so off put and be like, this person isn't even talking to me. They're more so yelling at me. They're trying to convince me. They're trying to get a point across. So what's the point that I'm saying here? Does sin separate us from God? Absolutely. Is living in an LGBTQ lifestyle sin? Absolutely. It is not the design of God. However, we have to actually engage this community with not just yelling at how horrible or yelling at them about sin, but we actually have to engage in relationship, hear their story, what made them get to the place they're at. Why do they believe what they believe? Every single person has a story. And the truth is Jesus wants us to see where we're at a part of his story. And so I want to encourage you the first thing to do, don't get in a yelling match. Don't talk politics. Don't try to reason with people. No, no, no. First, get to know who are they? What is their life story? Where are they at? Why do they believe what they believe? Take the emotion aside and let's actually build friendship in relationship and you'd be surprised at what happened. Okay, second thing you don't want to do. You and I do not have the power to change somebody. So right now, if in your mind, in your heart, you're saying, I'm going to change this person. Get that out. That is not biblical. That is not the heart of God because it is the spirit of God that does the work to not only save somebody, but to sanctify them and to renew their mind. Here's the deal. Jesus said in John 3 that when you surrender your life to Jesus, what happens? You become born again. So if somebody thinks they were born a part of the LGBTQ lifestyle, somebody thinks that this is how they were created. Well, here's the truth. When the spirit of God truly indwells them and fills them and their mind becomes renewed and they begin to read the scriptures and grow in their walk with God, God will begin to convict their heart and show them the reality of his design. Now, here's the thing. This is also amazing. There's no pressure on you and I to change anybody because we can't. All we simply do is because we are believers in Jesus who have the spirit of God living in us. We love people as Jesus will love them. We share the truth with them. And then we share the gospel as we build relationship with them. This is so powerful because all we simply do is we pray, we fast, we seek God. Absolutely. But we build relationship. We share the gospel and we actually allow them to see our lives so they can say they can see that the gospel is more than just head knowledge, but it is a heart revelation. And so the second thing we must break, you can't change them. I can't change them. It's God's desire and God's heart by his spirit to renew their mind for them to come into relationship with him through Jesus Christ to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. Now let's talk about what we can do. So as I think about what we can do, there's one specific portion of scripture. I just want to read this really quickly. It is so powerful from the apostle Paul. I wish more people would actually share this in the context and understanding of what it means today in our culture. So let's check this out. It's first Corinthians nine. Go with me to verse 19. Just let me read these few verses. It's just, it's amazing. So here's what it says. This is what Paul is saying. Even though I am a free man with no master, I have become a slave to all people to bring many 
to Christ. Isn't that a shift right now? When we think about loving people, especially the LGBTQ community, Paul says, I become a slave to all people to bring many to Christ. Now, Paul's not saying let them manipulate you, let them stand on you and trash you. No, what he's saying is I have literally given my life to certain people that they may come to know Jesus. What would happen in the body of Christ if the church said, instead of yelling and just condemning, what if we actually said, you know what? I'm going to love you to such a place. I'm going to give you so much space in my life because I care about you and want you to come to know the Lord. What would happen? But let me keep reading here. When I was with the Jews, I lived like a Jew to bring the Jews to Christ. When I was with those who follow the Jewish law, I too lived under that law. But even though I'm not subject to that law, I did this so I could bring to Christ those who are under the, under the law. Now listen to this closely right here. This is so, so powerful. Okay, so after he says in verse 20, when I was with the Jews, I lived like a Jew to bring the Jews to Christ. When I was with those who follow the Jewish law, I too lived under that law. Even though I'm not subject to it, I did this so I could bring to Christ those who are under the law. Now you're saying, what does that mean? Listen to this. When I am with the Gentiles who do not follow the Jewish law, I too live apart from that law so I can bring them to Christ. And here is the key verse. But, but I do not ignore the law of God. I obey the law of Christ. So when I'm weak, when I'm with those who are weak, I share their weakness for I want to bring the weak to Christ. Yes, I try to find common ground with everyone doing everything I can to save them. I do everything to spread the good news and share in its blessing. What is Paul saying? Paul is not condoning that it, it just because somebody lives in a sinful lifestyle that you should begin to live in sin to reach them with the gospel. No, no, no. He said so clearly, even though when I was with the Gentiles, I lived like them. And when I was with the Jews, I lived like them. I also did not ignore the law of God. I obey the law of Christ. Because why is this important? So many people will go, well, you know, it's all about love, brother. We have to agree. We have to be relevant. We should sound like this community. We should look like this community. We should really try our best to be that. No, no, no. What Paul is saying here is give your life, be, become slaves to people in the sense of love them to such a place where they actually have space in your life. Then when you're with them, try to find as much common ground as possible. Build relationship, build relationship, build community, build family. And as you do that, obey the law of Christ in your personal life so that when they see your life, they see something that looks different. And as you begin to build that relationship, like Paul said, I'm doing everything I can to save some and to share the good news. So this is a whole, like almost like a whole 180 for the body of Christ. Or what if we would actually love our neighbor, love the LGBT community as we love ourselves by sharing the truth, building relationship, trying to find as much common ground, hearing their story. Because here's the truth. Every person does not care what you say until you listen to them. So when is the last time you've listened to their story, listened to their beliefs, even if it's something so far out from the kingdom of God? Let's build relationship. Let's love on them. And when we see the opportunity, when the Holy Spirit says right now, Share the gospel, share your testimony, share your story. What has God done for you? If we do this, I believe we'll see thousands of people in the LGBTQ community saved. And right now, before we go, I just want to pray. I want to pray. Father, I pray for every person who's stuck in the LGBTQ community, every family member representing who's watching this video, every cousin, aunt, uncle, mom, dad, nephew, niece, whoever it is, Holy Spirit, we just say right now, would you reveal Jesus to the LGBTQ community? Would you break the back of the devil? The spirit of lust is trying to engulf a generation, God. Release purity and righteousness. Holy Spirit, with the revelation of Jesus, your goodness, your mercy, your blood and your body be released to this community and released to this generation. And we declare this in Jesus name. Last thing, this video encourage you, would you send it to two or three friends who have a family member who's looking for hope? Because here's the deal. We overcome by the blood of the lamb, the word of our testimony, and not loving our life to, unto death. I would love to hear your comments down below, questions, anything that I can pray for. I hope this bless you and encourage you. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys soon.